Hi, this is Kevin Deal, and today we're going to talk about uh, setting expectations or understanding tube phono stages. We're also going to talk about the Primo and the Evo 100 and what makes it different, how the controls work and what they're about, and you know how things sound and, and all of that fun stuff. What prompted this was a guy who has uh, not a super expensive uh, solid state phono stage and bought a tube phono stage and said there's noise in between cuts or when I lift up the needle there's noise and I don't get it and I don't like it I don't it does sound better but it shouldn't be noisy and I go have you ever had a tube phono stage before he goes no and I said okay uh, and I think that maybe this is a long overdue video to kind of talk about how these things work a little bit what to expect why people love them uh, but what you may or may not want to own one for. I mean, I don't know if you should buy one. All I want is for people to be happy, right? So, <clears throat> there's a few different ways to make tube funnel stages. Uh, one way would be that you use tubes to handle the, uh, the moving magnet portion. Moving magnet cartridges are cartridges that have typically a lot more output to them, right? More voltage. They're going to have five millivolts out. Uh, and then they might use something called a step-up transformer to get the rest of the gain that's necessary for low output cartridges like moving coil cartridges and moving coil cartridges can run all over the place anywhere from 0.3 or even 0.25 millivolt on up to uh, maybe 2.8 millivolts out okay and so they might use step-up transformers for that, and that's a fine way to go. Sometimes, in some cases, step-up transformers can kind of limit dynamics just a little bit. Now, if you didn't compare them to uh, some other products, you'd never, never notice it. Uh, and then sometimes it doesn't really limit dynamics at all, frankly. I mean, there's, there's some... But, you know, i got to say, an all-tube funnel stage like this, I mean, it can offer some kick-ass dynamics, but we'll talk about that in a second. Then there's going to be uh, tube phono stages that might use tubes to get enough gain for those moving magnet cartridges, because remember, they have more output, uh, typically up to 5 millivolts out. So you can get maybe 40 dB of gain from a pair of 6922s and, and you're uh, rocking, but maybe they also have an FET in them. And that's another way to get even more gain. So you can get on up to 60 or even 65 dB of gain. But if you're not going to put FETs in or step-up transformers in, that means the only way that you're going to do it is going to be with all tube. And that is a challenge. And there's got some companies that make nice ones. I think Aesthetics is still making uh, some very nice all tube funnel stages. But, you know, you look at them, they have a lot of tubes in them, and you look at them and they got a lot of parts because in order to do that, in order to do it with all tubes, you got to really pay attention to uh, what is inside the box. I mean, everything's got to be done just so, and specifically in the power supply. I think you remember that if you watch the video on this funnel stage, you know that I told you about the power supply and how it's a big toroidal power transformer with an AC offset killer. And then it uses these EL34s to get rid of uh, low frequency uh, ripple, right? And then there's uh, these capacitors that have uh, uh, snubber caps on them to get rid of high free. I mean, this thing is packed full of stuff. And then all the parts are mounted to a chassis uh, that is rubber mounted inside. And so you've got 12 AX7s for game, but then the moving coil tubes are back here in what's called the tomb. And the reason they call it the tomb is that's just what it is. They want to imagine a body that's buried in a, you know, they put it in cement underground. I mean, it's that kind of a thing. They put, the, put it back here where it is shielded away from all the rest of the sensitive components or noise-making components and to drop the noise floor, drop the noise floor. Primalin has always been about that, right? You look at a Primalin integrated amp and you'll know why Klipsch owners, Klipsch owners buy Primalin a tube integrated and preamps and power amps because, I mean, nobody makes a quieter product. 
period, right, in the world of all tube components. All right, so this guy, he goes, well, I know, but my solid state photo stage, it doesn't make any hiss when I'm picking up the needle. And I'm like, okay, God, I mean, uh, how do I kind of explain this to somebody? Uh, most people don't get too worried about that because they don't, they don't think about that. They just drop the needle and they go, oh my God, this sounds freaking amazing. I don't give a shit about nothing. I just love this. And that's what you should really be doing. But other people, I mean, there's customers that, now I've had them. I mean, I've been doing this, right, since I was 18. And I'm 65 now. I don't know how many years that is. 45, 46, I don't know, 47 years maybe. And I know the customer, right? They go, well, I put my ear up to the tweeter. And I go, is that how you listen to music? Well, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't put your ear up to the tweeter. Don't pay attention to the noise. I mean, look. They go, I know, but it's not quiet. It should be dead quiet. No, when you have a solid state phono stage and it all it's made up is, uh, is ICs and op amps and all of that stuff, there's little things that can be done to, I mean, you could make it literally where there is zero noise. When there is a lack of signal, it can shut. There's a lot of things that you can do to make sure that doesn't happen. But that's the same stuff that is gonna be in the circuit that you don't wanna hear. I mean, that's why you're buying tubes, man. You want the glory. You want the goosebumps. You know, you want that thing, that thing that you get when you pet your dog or when your significant other scratches your neck. It's that same thing that I crave for personally. And, and I know that many of you are the same way, but you know, some people, they are just wanted a little tight. And I'm here to kind of educate those people and let them know that if it is an all tube phono stage, it is normal. If you are in the moving coil mode to, uh, to hear some noise from your speakers, but they call it the signal to noise ratio. That's the number, right? Signal to noise and you don't get signal to noise until there's a signal and that doesn't happen until you drop the record needle and I was reading this review from high fine news and you got to read this review if you haven't right and they talk about this uh, being up there and that it measures up there with uh, some of the best on the market and including uh, competing with solid state co uh, components but something that is so cool, because I had never seen this talked about much in, uh, in magazines. They talked about the overload. And if you go to this review, they talk about headroom. And they talked about the Prima Luna having the headroom that you need if you're going to be using an Ortofon uh, 2M uh, bronze or, or 2M black or any cartridges that are kind of hot. This thing can handle a lot of swing and signals. That five millivolt output from an, an Ortofon 2M Black, it can swing up to 50 millivolts out and you can overload. You may not have the headroom in some, and they name a couple of uh, brands. And there's a lot of them out there, but this one is not one of them. And I wanna give you a tip about something, okay? There's a couple of controls on this uh, phono stage. And right over here, you've got a gain setting. Low is typically going to be for moving magnet, and then medium is for moving coil, and then high is for lower output moving coil. I suggest to you that you use possibly the lowest setting that you can, period, and then use the volume control, you know, keep the volume control on your preamp or your integrated amp, you know, upwards between 11 and maybe even three o'clock, okay? I mean, really, that's one way to help with that noise in between cuts for you if you want, okay? Uh, but you wanna play with it. There's no rules to this switch. Use what sounds best to you, okay? Now, there's a uh, control over here, and this is called loading. So what is that loading thing all about? All you're adding is resistance. And so if you increase the loading, 
you're putting more pressure on the signal. There's more impedance, right? More back pressure, if you want to call it that. And so with that, you can change uh, the dynamics of typically you're going to hear it in the top end. And so you can look at what your cartridge says it recommends for loading. Uh, either it's going to, typically they're going to give you a loading specification. I've seen company, some companies that don't. And you might want to, um, well, typically it's going to be in the owner's manual. It might say to you, we recommend that you load this cartridge at 100 ohms. That may be true, but you may want to adjust the switch and use what sounds best to you. I've seen that. Uh, many, many times where a cartridge says it's a, a cartridge that needs 100 ohms, but maybe it needs a little bit more or a little bit less. Use your ears. Use what sounds best, okay? And then you have a little switch over here on the side, and that's for capacitance. And that is for moving magnet cartridges typically, and that is to help eliminate something that's called ringing. So just flip the switch to what sounds best. I want you to know that this has been a product that so many people have waited for. They were going to put FETs in this initially. Okay, they had uh, Herman van den Dungen, who is, uh, you know, he does all the work with the engineers, and they, had, they were going to use these JFETs, and we were talking about them. They were very esoteric, and nobody had ever used them, and they were really trick. And then when push came to shove, they decided to go <coughs> all tube, which meant it was going to really make this an expensive product to build. But you know what? That's the way it's always been for Prima Luna, right? Parts and engineering, parts and engineering, but it always leads to the same end result for Prima Luna, and that is music illuminated. Thank you.